So let me then turn to the third question, and here it goes. According to the article by Georg Nortov, Professor Solms has tentatively identified the ventromedial prefrontal cortex as the location of that part of the brain giving rise to the self. What happens to the mind when this bit of the brain is damaged? So you can see this third question builds uh, on the second insofar as it pertains to this, this thing that we call the self. Uh, Nortoff says that I have said that the prefrontal cortex um, is, uh, the, the, is, I have tentatively said that the prefrontal cortex in its medial aspects is the neural substrate of what we call self. So let me ex explain what I mean. That, that, and then the question is, what happens when this part of the brain is damaged? Well, um, let me actually rather start with what happens when this part of the brain is damaged. In a nutshell, what happens is the patient enters into dreamlike states of mind. Their, their, their mental processes lose, in a word, the capacity for selectivity. There's a sort of equalization uh, of traces, which is a the phrase that the great neurologist Alexander Luria used to describe these patients. Everything becomes equal to everything else. There's, a, there's an inability to, to sort wheat from chaff. So uh, perceptions uh, flow into thoughts, flow into memories, flow into fantasies uh, without the patient drawing any distinction. And they are in a, in a, in a dreamlike, confusional state of mind. Um, what I said earlier in relation to the second question about the self, the, the, the notion of the self, being uh, dependent upon a quite high order uh, a, a, a capacity for, for cognitive re reflexiveness uh, applies here too. Um, these patients not being able to distinguish one category of thought from another, also not able to distinguish self from other. Nevertheless, uh, and here comes the limitations uh, of the notion of self at this level of the brain. Nevertheless, these patients do have thoughts. Um, they do have cognitions. They do have memories. They do talk to you. Um, they are in a dreamlike state of consciousness, and there is a self there um, having these thoughts. Uh, it's just that it's not a veridical, veridically represented self. That is to say, the patient experiences him or herself as having thoughts which really don't qualify, um, they, don't, they don't deserve the status uh, that the patient um, grants to them. In other words, they have irrational thoughts, they have, they have um, phantasmagorical thoughts, they have false thoughts, what we call confabulations. They take one thing, a dream, and another thing, a perception, to, to, to have the same sort of uh, mental status. And so, although there is a self there, it's a self that's not adequately differentiating categories of knowledge, and most fundamentally importantly, it's also not, cat not, not differentiating me from not me. Um, and so, it's a, very, um, it's a very degraded form of self. Now, what all of this points to is that although these patients do indeed have deficits in what we would call self, um, the, 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 this is not the whole of the self, because as you can see, there are important components, constituents of what we would think of as self, as still, they are still present in these patients. And what that uh, in turn reflects is the distributed nature of the um, neural machinery for what we call the self. Um, there are all these representations that the, in the lateral parts of the brain, these patients still have those representations. They're still talking about them in this incoherent dreamlike way, but they're still there. They're not possessed properly. They're not reflected upon properly, but they're still there. So the contents of the self are still there, although they're not properly attributed. Uh, below that, if you were to remove the whole of the cortex, and I'm now going back to what I was saying in, re in response to the second question, um, you still have a more primitive, sentient mental presence, um, which I think, depending on what you mean by the word self, you know, uh, um, also um, is an important comp component of what we think of, what we mean by the word self. So um, these patients with, with, with ventromesial frontal lesions, 
um, they lose important aspects, fundamental aspects of this cognitive thing that we call the self. But again, I think that the evidence, uh, the clinical reality in these cases points us to the conclusion which I reached uh, in response to the second question, which is that we mustn't have too elaborate, too cognitive, too intellectual um, a notion of what a self is, or certainly of what a mental presence is. And maybe we need a different word for sentience or presence um, uh, 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 to differentiate uh, it from a self, which, 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 which implies a certain amount of cognitive reflexive awareness, the capacity to think about one's self as, as uh, distinct from others.